Hello all you YouTubers out there. This is the latest video that I've done. It's a troll blood bomber. Um, I'm going to take you through all the processes I went through really, really super quickly. Uh, took me about four, no, probably three hours in total, I think. Um, this is just the assembly. Uh, the joints don't fit that well on the bomber. So um, plenty of green stuff was needed. I actually missed a little bit on the back, which is a shame. I thought I could hide it, but obviously uh, I couldn't. You'll see that later on. Um, the hands and things like that, I, I ended up pinning um, because it was very loose. That seemed complete. So you can see a bit of green stuff around his hands, green stuff around his waist and where it meets his lower half. Um, his back, I think if he turns around, you will see there was a slight gap down, its, down his back, then his spine just there, which unfortunately I thought I could, I could get rid of and hide in, and I couldn't, so never mind. We live and learn. This is the first time I used an airbrush on a on a mini, so you're going to see me actually going through the airbrush. I've coated him with uh, grey primer, and this is using Troll Blood base, watered down, straight in the airbrush. So I went for all of his skin and give him a, a nice solid coat of Troll Blood base color, which is the blue that you can see there, and then I gradually went up through adding adding Troll Blood highlight. To, uh, at incremental points, um, pretty much pointless. I spent ages highlighting that through the colours when really what I could have done was just literally put Troll Blood Highlight in straight and got the same effect because I went through what you can see now, I went through lots and lots of processes of adding one to one of Troll Blood Highlight and Troll Blood Base and then two to one and then three to one and I was trying to slowly whittle it down but I think the airbrush allows you a lot more scope because you can control the flow. So I could have just put the highlight in and achieved the, the end results really much quicker than I did. This highlighting section probably took me about an hour and I could have, I reckon I could have done it in about 10 minutes if I would have just used it straight. Um, I think you're starting to see pretty much near enough straight troll bud highlight in there and I could have just used that and got away with it. But you live and learn. It's the first time I've ever done a mini with, with my airbrush. And you can see, yeah, just trying to do the high points on his body and things like that. There's really, really, really good effects you can get. I'm really impressed with the airbrush. And he looked a bit light, I thought, so I, I got him all done up. And he looked a little bit light, so I give him a, a wash, a mud wash. I think you see, you're seeing him now after he's had a mud wash all over his body. I'm doing a Cufflin Brown. And the barrels, so just getting base coats and all the barrels and all of his leather goods and all of his cloth that he's got. Um, that is obviously after I've given him a base coat of uh, gunmetal and his cup and brain. Um, in my world, oh, that was the uh, jack bone for his nails and teeth, which are, I literally just jack bone color and then Devlin mud. Sorry, grey tone sepia. A sepia wash on it, which gives it a really, really nice effect. His whatever they are, knuckles, warts, rocks. I think there's rocks like right at their back. Um, I wish I would have done that a bit. Dark, bit of a darker colour. I think that's Troll Blood base mixed with a little blob of black just to darken it a bit and I, um, I wish I would have done it a darker colour. Um, his metal bits on top, what the little dwarfs hanging on to, that was purely uh, Vallejo steel with a sepia wash and then dry brush back up a little bit um, to give it the rusty look that I've done there. It was jackbone with sepia washes all over the fuse. And the fire, I just done a red base and tried to highlight as best I can. I'm not like really doing fire, so I just gave it a whirl. And this is PVA glue going on the the base itself. 
don't really have any ideas about this. I might try and do a nice base next time and, and see how we can make it look a bit better. Um, but that's just purely a little bit of mud stuck in there. Sorry, not mud, sand. On my sandbox. And uh, some static grass chucked in there and a few bits and bobs. And that's incomplete. Um, some focus. It's incomplete. Um, his cloth is brown. The straps on his arms, I think they're supposed to be metal. But in my world, they're not. They're leather. Because I've done them leather. So um, he's got all of his metal. It's all washed. His teeth and nails, I thought, look quite good. I'm quite impressed with that. Um, and I'm very impressed with the, with the effects that you can get with the airbrush. It's uh, it's cracking for getting your highlights and the look just right. And that's him done. Um, he's a good little model. He looks quite nice. Some mistakes I've made and some things I've learned about the way to airbrush. But overall, I was impressed with the quality of the model and and the overall effects you can get with an airbrush top drawer. I'm going to be painting a lot more. I've got myself a dread fleet box my first GW purchase. Uh, so we'll do some videos on that I expect. Competition. I'm after a subscriber run. I'm going to be starting a new website shortly for all sorts of games and things like that and board games and uh, stuff you can't normally find in Toys R Us and stuff like that. Not miniatures as such but games itself. Um, I want to get my subscribers up to 500 so I can get a few more views on my videos. So I'm going to be giving my Blitzer and my Bomber away to one person out of the first 500 subscribers that I get for free anywhere in the world. Um, they're, what are they, $40 models, so it's quite a nice price. They're painted, they're ready to go, and they could be yours. Just subscribe.